So when I founded my aerospace company, the goal was to build the world's first electric airliner. What I realized along the way is that in order to transform air travel, we need to rethink, retool the industry that builds planes. We can't build 21st century technology using late 20th century processes. And today I'm gonna to try to answer a question that I've been wrestling with my entire career. First as an academic on aerospace product development and for the past five years as running this company. Why are we not seeing the same rate of progress in commercial airplanes as we are in other tech? And what can we do to fix that? We're living in this age where we're seeing this accelerating rate of technical progress all around us. Take cars. In the last decade, we've seen electrification, connectivity, ride sharing, and now driverless cars. In the space industry, we've seen reusable rockets, space tourism, the first private manned space flights, satellite internet, and overall tenfold increase in commercial launch activity. But in this same time frame, we haven't had much new to show for in the world of commercial airplanes. Go to the airport, like I am. The newest airplane you'll see is the Airbus A350. It's now a decade old. Its US counterpart, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, came out 17 years ago. It's the last clean sheet airplane to be designed and built in the US. And these are our newest planes, the much more common aircraft. The narrow bodies are much older. The Airbus A320 is a 1980s design, and the 737 original design is from before the moon landing. And if you're flying regionally with turboprops, the only aircraft in production is the ATR series that was introduced in the mid-1980s. And for short flights, it's still the greenest, most fuel-efficient aircraft out there. Why is it like this? The most common misconception about this lack of progress is because it's a lack of investment. And that's not true. In the last decade, we've seen the West spend over $200 billion on aerospace R&D, enough to fund 10 new clean sheet wide body aircraft programs. So why is the industry not able to turn that R&D spend into bringing new modern aircraft to market? The problem is in how this industry does product development. It's working in this outdated process. The best practices have changed and that's what everybody else has figured out. So what exactly is it that they're doing differently? Uh, it really boils down to five things, five principles of modern product development. And if we only change these five things, we will see very different results. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. These principles are the foundation of their success. And if aviation embraces them, the results could be transformative. The first principle is simple but powerful, iterate. Iterative design is based on the idea that feedback beats planning. In the past decades, we've built analysis tools that previous generations could only dream about. Modern tools such as CAD, CFD, Digital Twins, Industry 4.0 lets us predict, simulate, forecast like we've never done before. But the paradox is that this hasn't led to improved productivity. Instead, bringing aircraft to market costs more and takes longer than it ever has in history. I think it's just become too complex. It's led us to analysis paralysis and we started becoming uncomfortable with risk and uncertainty and just the general chaos of building aircraft. And we start forgetting what it's like to be building things. For something as complex as an aircraft, the cheapest and fastest way to understand what you're building it's just to build it. Other industries, companies like SpaceX, have adopted this rapid iteration approach. And that's how they, in a very short time, went from knowing very little about rockets to building the world's most reliable launch system. They've learned by doing and by getting the repetitions in. At heart, we decided to take this iterative approach to build an aircraft, learn from it, and then build a new one. Now, we're still in early phases compared to a company like SpaceX, but we're already seeing this compounding effect that with every iteration, not only is the plane getting better, but we're getting better at building planes. Last year, we rolled out our first iteration of our X-1 demonstrator, and when we do our first flight early next year, we'll be the largest battery electric aircraft ever to have flown. 
But even in between these major milestones, we're constantly iterating on the component level. What we've learned is that it's never actually been easier than today to build full-scale aircraft. So computer analysis is not the enemy here. You just need to balance your digital tools with your physical tools. Rapid prototyping, advanced manufacturing, 3D printing. You do that, you keep your team small, and then you can work at this pace that was not even imaginable a few decades ago. But if you want to do iterative design, the first thing you need to do is remove this major bottleneck from the process. Which brings us to the next point in our list, verticalize. To iterate and move fast, you need to close the loop between design and manufacturing. You need to do all of it under the same roof. You need to have aircraft level engineers, system level engineers, manufacturing engineers be one team working together. And this used to be how the aerospace industry was set up. And that's also probably why we saw a lot more innovation and productivity in the past. But in the 1990s and 2000s, the industry shifted to an outsourcing model. And in the aerospace today, the design and manufacturing of airplanes is contracted to this convoluted network of suppliers from all over the world. The problem is that it makes it impossible to move fast. As every time you change the design, you have to have outside meetings, you have to have new negotiations. You ha basically have hundreds of different teams that are working on the same product and still nobody's really seeing the big picture. That's another lesson that these new wave companies have understood. So Tesla's built the world's most profitable electric vehicle by building everything in tandem. The product, the components, and the factory, the machine that builds the machine. So at heart, this is what we're aiming to do as well. We built our first demonstrator aircraft, the X-1, from a small footprint prototype manufacturing facility designing both the aircraft and the tooling ourselves. Having the same team thinking about both design and manufacturing makes it so much easier to optimize these things together. And you can keep this tight leash on your production so that you can control quality, traceability, conformance, and all those things that are especially important for the aerospace industry. But you can't build everything in-house. You still need a supply chain. And that brings us to the next number on our list. Number three, commoditize. Technical breakthroughs happen when hardware becomes commoditized. Unfortunately, that's not how the world of aerospace is set up today. The components come from this expensive, specialized supply chain that's siloed off from the rest of the industrial machine. This model doesn't scale, and it's another lesson that other industries have learned. So when SpaceX started building rockets, they didn't turn to the expensive, radiation-hardened, antiquated electronics of the space industry. They used mainstream consumer electronics. And when Tesla built the first electric cars, they were using lithium-ion batteries coming from the laptop supply chain. Today, the obvious place for the aerospace industry to look is the automotive industry. They're making high-quality components at much larger volumes at a fraction of the cost. We're already seeing this in companies like Garmin that got started making components for cars and boats. And when they got into the aerospace industry, they were able to build much better product at much lower price. But commoditization is not just for electronics and avionics. It's also the right lens to understanding electrification. Electricity is the most commoditized form of energy transfer. Batteries are the most commoditized form of energy storage. And electric motors are the most commoditized form of doing mechanical work. That's why electrification has transformed all modes of transportation. Everything from our scooters, our bikes, our cars, our boats, our trucks, our buses, because they're surfing this wave of a commoditized common supply chain. Meanwhile, the aerospace industry runs on jet engines, which is the most niche form of propulsion out there, and uses jet fuel, which is the most niche form of energy storage. So this requires this specialized ecosystem to support and maintain, uh, and maybe that's manageable for a place like LAX, but for regional remote airports, this becomes a big deal. So what could commoditization mean for aviation? Take the Tesla semi-truck. It's roughly the same size and power level as a 30-seater regional airplane, but because it's using this commoditized supply chain, it's about 100 times cheaper to produce and about 100 times cheaper to operate. 
This really shows what's possible and the type of headroom we have to reduce costs in aerospace. And that's why we need electrification in aviation to reduce the cost of air travel. So, and while commoditization can transform the cost and the scalability of hardware, it's only half the story. Because once the hardware is in place, what really defines performance, safety, and even certification isn't the metal or the motor, it's the code that runs it. And that brings us to our next principle. Write your own software. Aircraft today are computers on wings. And the big challenges this industry has had in the last decade has not been from hardware, but from software. Today, software is what defines quality, safety, reliability, and even certifiability. It's by far the most important thing to verticalize. But still, most aerospace companies do not control their own software stack. A typical narrow body today has a thousand different software boxes coming from a hundred different vendors, each controlling one thing. You have one box to control the landing gear actuation. You have one box to control the wing deicing system, and so on and so on. If nothing else, these systems just are heavy, they're expensive, uh, they take a long time to design and they're a nightmare to update. This is actually where there's a direct parallel with the car industry. Because this used to be how cars were built until the new EV companies came along and they started putting software first. And today companies like Rivian go so far as to describing themselves as software defined vehicles. And you're also seeing it in the defense industry where companies like Andrel come in with a mantra that commoditized hardware with great software beats exquisite hardware with poor software. So that's why, at heart, we're writing our own code. So instead of spending our time shuffling software requirements and interface control documents between different vendors, we can update our software fast and we can iterate. And that's what makes it high quality in the long run. So what I talked about so far are these four technical principles to iterate, to verticalize, to commoditize, and to write your own software. Like, and that might sound great on paper, but how do you do this in practice. And that brings us to the next point on our list. Our last point is to cross-pollinate. We need to bring in talent from other industries to work on commercial airplanes. It's not enough to bring in these outside ideas. We also need to bring in the people that know how to execute on these ideas. People that know how to iterate on structural design, that know how to build a verticalized factory, that know how to turn commoditized electronics into airworthy system. They know how to electrify powertrains and know how to write software from the ground up. For too long, the workforce in this commercial airplane industry has been isolated from the rest of the world. That's created this culture where we only measure people's value on their years of aerospace experience. And this is not the way forward. So that's our five principles. Why is this important? Can't things just stay the way they are? Well, the natural state of any technology is decline. In the last decade of the aerospace industry, we've seen aging fleets, inflating costs, the decline of connectivity, and longer and longer lead times for aircraft deliveries. To get up to speed with the accelerating technology all around us, we just need to take a page from other industries. If we could get even a fraction of the effects that they had, we could fundamentally transform air travel. We could restore connectivity to thousands of communities that have lost service, and we can create this new era of cheap, sustainable, everyday air travel. And that's the future we should be building.